everybody, welcome to the 11, video 11 Blade 3. Here's the objectives you guys came up with. Be a little more specific, here's some things you should be able to do uh, after looking at those objectives. So don't forget, book chapter 16 in your book is pretty nifty. There's a lot of cool things to read. Okay, so reactions. Reactions with or of acids and bases. So there are neutralization reactions and hydride reactions and salt hydrolysis. So um, notice what all of them have in common, okay? Water, 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 water. Okay, so water is involved in acid-base reactions. If you react an acid or base, you get water. If you add some chemicals to water, you get acids or bases. And that's what the other three kind of are. So take a look at them, look at the patterns. So neutralization reactions are when acids and bases make water and salt. So you have sulfuric acid. If you don't remember how to write it, look it up. Sulfuric acid reacts with sodium hydroxide. Uh, so you get a periodic table, you look at them. And so we have an acid and a base. They're going to make water. So let's get the water going, H2O. All right. Now how do you know the rest of it? Well, we have sodium and sulfate that we have to put together and cancel their charge. So we need two, two sodium ions, sulfate ion. All right. And then we look to make sure it's balanced. We need two there, so I have two sodiums. Two hydrogens, two hydrogens, one sulfate, one sulfate, two oxygen. Uh, I think I'm going to need two there. There we go. Okay. Hydrochloric acid, HCl, aqueous, plus potassium hydroxide, KOH, aqueous. They react to form, so we've got acid in a base. The salt they make, so the cation of the, of the base and the anion of the acid make KCl, Y, plus one, minus one. Check your PT. And then H2O, and let's see what we got. We got K, K, C, L, C, L, R. So I want you to try this one, right, and see if you could come up with the formula for this neutralization reaction. Why do you think it's called neutralization? Well, it forms water. So it takes the acid and base properties away, sort of. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Okay. So what do we use that reaction for? We use neutralization as a reaction in titration. So titration is a technique that utilizes um neutralization reactions. So you put one of the things in the burette, one of the things in the flask, and then you add them together. You put an indicator in the flask so that you know when they're neutralized by color change. Okay, so um, this is called a burette. Burette, sometimes it's spelled like that. It depends if you're feeling French or not. Um, it measures to the hundreds place, so you got this, all right, this decimal place. And it measures from 0 to 50. Okay, so it looks a little weird when you read it. It's like reading upside down. <clears throat> so you put the substance in, rinse it, and fill it. This is uh, um, the handle to open it. It's called a stopcock. Um, so in here, you put um, an indicator. So that's something that's going to change colors. And record the volume. So you say 50 milliliters, 0.5 milliliters, whatever. You record it. Maybe that's what it is. And then you add this and then record how much you added. And what happens is as you do that, you do the neutralization reaction. How do you know neutralization is done? Well, you put in an indicator that changes color at different pHs. Um, so litmus and phenolphthalein are two ones that we used. Um, and then equivalence is when you have the same amount of hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions to make water. And they have equivalent moles. And then the end point is when the color changes. Okay. So once you know that, we can calculate stuff, find out unknown stuff. Uh, when moles of hydrogen ion equals moles of hydroxide ion, you get water. Yay. Woohoo. Okay. So, to get, so that's molarity. We got moles per liter. So if we multiply molarity, which is moles per liter time volume, then um, the liters cancel out and you get moles. So you might recognize this equation as M1V1 equals M2V2. So all we did was change 1 equals acid, 2 equals base. All right. Now, we have to take into account the number of hydrogen ions and the number of hydroxide ions um, in the formula of the acid. Hydrogen, acidic, acidic hydrogen ions, and then basic hydroxide ions. Okay. And so it's going to be a number, a number from number, all right, one, two, three for that, 
or that one's going to be a 1, 2, or 3. All right, so if 25 milliliters of 0.25 molar sulfuric acid is titrated with 75 milliliters of sodium hydroxide bait, what is the concentration of the base? So let's list out our variables. MBVBOH minus. All right, so MA is molarity of the acid, 0.25 molar. VA, volume of the acid, 0.025 liters. Hydrogen, okay, so sulfuric acids, H2SO4. So there are two H's, two H's. H2SO4 has two hydrogens in it, so that's where that comes from. Molarity of the base. Oh, concentration of base, that's our question mark. How much do we use? 0 0.075 liters. Hydroxide, let's see, sodium hydroxide, NaOH. One, so there's one. One. Okay, so then you plug it in. Uh, Na. V A H plus equals M B V B O H minus. So we plug it all in. 0.25 times 0 0.025 times 2 equals X. That's what we're looking for. 0 0.075 and 1. So we would divide by 0 0.075, 0 0.075 and 1. And we get, hmm, did I bring the calculator? On the calculator, plugging and chugging. Times two. We find out that the base, molarity of the base is 0.167 molar. NaOH. Okay, so all of this data has to come from the titration problem. Okay, so here we have 25 milliliters of HCl, so uh, molarity of acid, volume of acid, H plus of the acid. So HCl, this is 1, 1. Okay, volume of acid, 0 0.025 liters. Molarity of the acid, oh, concentration of acid is what we're looking for. Molarity of the base, let's see, oh, we have three molar base, volume of the base, 35 milliliters, and then OH minus. Well, we have to figure out the formula. Oh, we got it. So two OH minuses, so there's two. So then we plug it in to the formula, and it will be a H plus equals. So really, when we put two solutions of an acid and a base together, we dilute them. So we got to use the dilution equation. That's what we're using. One hydrogen ion, and then three more times 0 0.035 liters. Let's see. Times two, and then divide by 0 0.035. One, 0 0.035. One, and we get three more times 0 0.035 liters. Times two, divided by 0 0.035, and boom, we find out that. The um, molarity of the acid is 8.4 molar. Okay. Check it out. Can we do it? Hopefully you can. Oh, okay. So that was neutralization reactions. And neutralization reactions make salts. Okay. So we assume that salts are neutral because water forms when they're forming. But the truth is, depends on what kind of acid and base make the salt. So if you start with a strong acid and a strong base to do a neutralization, you're going to make a salt. So, we're going to make a neutral solution. Uh, so, that's a neutral salt. Okay? If you put a salt into water and that salt came from a strong acid and a strong base, you get a neutral solution. What if the salt you are putting into water came from a strong acid and a weak base? Well, then you're going to get an acidic solution. And if you have a salt from a weak acid and a strong base, you're going to get a basic solution. So if you notice, the strength of that um, one that has a stronger wins. Now, weak and weak is unknown because you have to um, test the solution when you're done. Okay. So pH of salts. You have to check what happens in water. So we're looking at this, and we know it's a salt because it's got a cation and an anion. This always came from the base. From the base. Okay. And this part always comes from acid. 
So, all right. So the base Na comes from NaOH. That's a strong base. All right. Cn comes from HCn. That's a weak acid. So then this salt, when you put it into water, will produce, so it gives a basic solution in water. So what we call it when we put a salt in water is called hydrolysis. Hydrolysis is when you put a salt in water. And when you hydrolyze this, you're going to take Cn minus, and you put it into water, and then it's going to turn it into HCN plus OH minus because this um, this is from a weak acid, and so it really wants to be together and not be weak, so it's going to produce the base in water. Okay. This is a salt that came from NH4, comes from NH3. That's a base. What kind of base? Weak. Weak base. All right. NO3 came from acid. What kind of acid? HNO3, so it's strong acid. So this would be a gives an acidic solution in water. So um, what you would do is take the weak part, NH4+, plus, put it into water, H2, and then you'll turn it into NH3, plus H3. Plus. So this is acid. So you made an acidic solution by hydrolyzing that. Hydrolysis is when you add water. Okay. I want you guys to try this one. Okay. I think what acid or what base this came from and what acid that came from and then see if you can figure out what kind of solution it makes. All right. So the third kind of reaction was anhydrides in water. Anhydride means without water. So the stuff we're looking at are rocks and gases. <laughs> rocks and gases. So metal oxides are rocks like calcium oxide, metal oxide, um, sodium oxide, metal oxide, uh, magnesium oxide, metal oxide. These are called base anhydrides. Okay, so metal oxides are called base anhydrides. Non-metal oxides are acid anhydrides and they're mostly gases. So CO2, non-metal oxide, uh, SO3 non-metal oxide. Um, let's do another one. NO2, non-metal oxide. So um, anhydrides look like regular compounds, regular anionic compounds. Key thing is they have oxygen in them and they have a uh, substance in front of the oxygen. Okay. So anhydrides react with water to make acids or bases. So this is a non-metal, non-metal oxide. So before we even write the reaction, we should be thinking acid and hydride. Now let's see why. So we put carbon dioxide into water and we get H2CO3. Right? This is acid. Right? So uh, non-metal oxide, acid and hydride plus water gives acid. This is a metal oxide. Right. So we're thinking in our head, base and hydride. And then let's see what happens when we put in water. Barium oxide plus H2O gives barium hydroxide. Woo! Okay, let's see this. All right, so the reactions we're looking at are what chemicals do when you put them into water and non-metal oxides turn into acid. Okay. These are gases in the atmosphere, and so that's what causes acid rain. Okay, and you saw um, some of you read articles about acid rain. So here's the non-metal oxides, non-metal oxides, and they turn into acids when they hit water in the atmosphere, and then that water rains down. Ah, okay, but it's very dilute, 
So these are this is strong and that's strong, but they're still dilute, which is why we're not burning up or we're getting reacted on. Right? Effects of acid rain. Uh, so to review, acids plus bases equal salt and water. That's called a neutralization reaction. Neutralization reaction. Right? And then we utilize that reaction in a technique called titration. Technique. And then we use this calculation to uh, use the data from titration to figure out stuff we don't know. If something's a big KA, it's a strong acid, a big KAB is a strong base. All right, here are the salt reactions, salts in water. Okay, that is hydrolysis. Hydrolysis. All right, if the salts came from a strong acid and a strong base, it's going to be neutral. If the salt came from a strong acid weak base, it's going to be acidic. Weak acid, strong base, it's going to be basic. Okay. This is reactions of anhydrides, hydrides in water. Okay. So acid anhydrides, which are non-metal oxide, make acid when you put them in water. Base, metal oxides in water make base. Okay. So, um... Sort out the reactions, see what you're thinking about, and this is it. It's been fun. Hopefully you guys check out Chapter 16 is your last hurrah in chemistry. You know how to do all of these things, and you can explain how water affects acid and base reactions. Equilibrium we talked about. We talked about neutralization and other reactions. So that's it. Your objectives are met, hopefully. Keep practicing. Peace out. It's been fun.